welcome to my channel, Ginger Books, or welcome back if you're a tuning watcher or subscriber. However, if you're a watcher, you should subscribe. So today I am bringing you a fun-filled book tag video again. <laughs> um, I'm just finding these book tag inspirations by just typing book tag challenge or book challenges into Google. <laughs> so I happened on this one, and I don't think I've ever seen this one on YouTube. I could be wrong. If somebody has, please comment down below because uh, I would really love to watch it and see what how they answer these questions. But I found this on Dreamland Book Blog by Beatrice. It is her book blog. I will put the link down below. It is 16 questions that I have answered. So if you see me look over here, I am reading the questions so that um, I don't for word I'm wrong. 16 questions of pretty much what you don't look for in books and what is a big turn off for books or endings or protagonists or anything like that. So anyways, let's get into the video. Number one, nope ed ending. A book ending that made you go e nope, either in denial, rage, or simply because it was crappy. I might get a lot of flack for this because there is still a fandom for these books. <laughs> and before I warn you, I loved these books in middle school. And I'm already kind of narrowing down which series this is. I lo love these books through middle school. I read them like five or six different times. I have very good memories and how the series, you know, got me through middle school and really loved it. However, when I reread it towards the end of high school, beginning of college, I had issues. And this is after, you know, reading Cassandra Clare and reading more books kind of in this type of genre that I started to have issues with this series and just how off the main character's romance was. Long-winded intro to build up to this answer, and that is New Moon by Stephanie Meyer, which is the second book in the Twilight Saga. I did not like the ending very well. Just because through this whole book, and I'm sorry if I'm spoiling this, if you haven't read this, what are you doing? Are you living under a rock? But I also understand because this book was, these series was so hyped and if you're not a person that reads uh, books because of hype I get it throughout this whole thing Edward is leaving Bella because he thinks it's what's best for her you don't find that out until the end of the book but at that point they are adults they are senior year I believe of high school she can a woman can be t completely okay with making your own decision. I mean, she pretty much knows the Collins are vampires at this point, um, the Volturi system, the hierarchy, anything like that. And I understand Edward was out there to protect him. You understand how he is a brooding character, but you understand him more in the Midnight Sun, which is his point of view of in Twilight. But I still cannot get over that she just accepted him back so fast. Especially after he was willing, when he found out that she died, and I say died loosely because she didn't die, obviously, because there's two other books, uh, willing to pretty much end his own life because he couldn't live without her because of the whole vampire, they only have one mate for life kind of thing. But just sent a red flag to me like, mm, no, 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 no. That almost kind of romanticizes um, very... Uh, dependent attachments <laughs> so I didn't like that I also didn't like how Bella was just so accepting of him back that she wasn't like you need to grovel at my feet after I literally had to save your life because you're gonna make a decision that I didn't want you to do even if I were to pass away so yeah I and I didn't like that ending very well reading it again <laughs> after a few years and it bugged me Number two, note protagonist, a main character you dislike and drives you crazy. Again, I'm going to get flagged for this. And I'm going to hold up the first book in the series, which is Twilight by Stephanie Meyer. Bella annoyed the crap out of me. It's all about Eclipse. Um, when she kind of started becoming her own person and not just like a blind follower of Edward. Which I feel like them and New Moon having to be a part of kind of helped her bring her out of her own shell a little bit with a little bit of help with Jacob saying that you don't need to depend on other people <laughs> even though supposedly she's supposed to be highly independent but then she 
like literally depends on Edward for almost like survival almost. But I Bella bothers me. Um, I feel like she's a 2D character. Um, didn't really have a lot of character development and she was whiny. So whiny. Um, the second one, I disliked this character up until I want to say the fourth book. And that is Clary from the Mortal Instruments series, which is the OG series of the Shadowhunter Chronicles by Cassandra Clare. She annoyed me. I, I get it. I know I'm going to have somebody in the comments that's going to be like, but she's 15. She's supposed to be whiny. She literally just had her world turned upside down. I get it. However, it got to the point in, what is it, City of Glass that I was almost ready to throw the book going, you are annoying the piss out of me. You're crying at every little moment. You're literally having outbursts at any other moment. Like, I get it. It's high stress. But even Luke, who is kind of like her father, kind of just turns around and goes, knock it off. You're being whiny. You need to keep going. This is not a time to fall apart. Your mom needs you. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, thank you, Luke. When he finally did that, I was like, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> because even for a 15-year-old, yes, it's tough. But your mom's life is at stake. Your life is at stake. A whole bunch of shit is at stake. That you need to suck it up and we'll fall apart later. <laughs> so, essentially. Number three. Nope series. A series that turned out to be one huge pile of nope or a series that just wasn't worth it anymore. I think everybody already knows my answer to this one. And that is the after series by Anna Todd. Even though, granted, I only read about half of this book and just couldn't get through it. I, I've been talking to my friends about this and they're trying to tell me to look at it in a different light of, you know, Harden and Tessa come from different type of family backgrounds. Hart, you know, Harden kind of being the reason why he was being the rough boy and kind of being the angsty teenager and then going into college because of, you know, his dad having a drinking problem um, and getting divorced from his family. And, you know, the night that his mom kicked her out, she, I think it hints at that she pretty much got raped and beat up because of their father um, getting in trouble with loan sharks in London him having to witness that, and I think he also got beat up a little bit himself. So there's a lot of trauma. Um, it In the second movie, I'm sorry if this is spoilers, you see that uh, his mom did try to get him help, but he just, I don't think, I think just didn't, I don't know if he just didn't want it or face the problems or if he just wanted, I, I don't, I don't really know. So you have somebody that comes from a very uh, traumatic background to Tessa who, her mom, her dad left her mom, which I'm wondering if that's not true because of the end of the second movie. And I could, you know, you probably are telling me just read the books, just keep reading the books. <laughs> but from somebody who was very trying to pick up the pieces and being overly uh, analyzing and kind of over managing her daughter's life since that's her only child. And being under that and being so raised so naively, I, I'm not saying that's bad, but and then getting to college and pretty much cheating on her boyfriend <laughs> and kind of feeling lost because she's now on her own and all she's known is the, a mom that's always been overbearing on her because of her dad leaving and maybe not even f really knowing truly how her dad left. It just two broken people come, trying to come together and form a relationship and even then and especially in here, there's more, uh, what I feel is more mental abuse and a lot of manipulation and mind games in this. And that's what turned me off. Um, cause I don't think I could have, uh, the time I was trying to read this, I don't think I was in the mental headspace to deal with this. Um, I'm getting pushed to try it again and just to keep pushing through it. It does get better, but I don't know. Let me know down in the comments below if you would like me to do book vlogs reading these. All right, after number three, <laughs> and that long-winded discussion, number four, no pairing, a popular pairing or ship you don't support. Again, I'm going to catch flack for this. Bella and Edward from the Twilight Saga. I feel like they were just too much on alike in how they dealt with things that they weren't the puzzle piece characters that Stephanie Myers tried to make them. I don't know. I just didn't support it after a while. Number five, 
no plot twist. A plot twist you didn't see coming or didn't like. So I love plot twists. That's one of the things that helps with character development and world building is the plot, or not even world building, it's just the character development, is how do characters deal with plot twists and how do they grow from there. And my reigning champ of my favorite author of all time of plot twists that I love, even though sometimes it like enrages me <laughs> because it's just like, whoa, it came out of left field. But The Shadowhunter Chronicles, Infernal Devices, and Dark Artifices trilogies by Cassandra Clare. Just enough said. Anybody who's read those trilogies knows. <laughs> Number six. Nope. Decision. A character decision or action that made you shake your head. Nope. Jace Herondale's decisions in the Mortal Instruments series. A lot of them until like the last two books made me want to hit my head against the wall. <sighs> Even though I love him. He's a very angsty character that I absolutely adore. Number seven, nope, genre. A genre you will never read. I like romance in my books, but I will not read overly fluffy or unrealistic romances. They're just, eh. And I also don't like um, hard-hitting topic books. So, or novels like Jodie Pickle. And I, I'm sorry if I pronounced her last name wrong. And uh, Noah Sparks. Or Nicholas Sparks. Nicholas Sparks, I'm sorry. I don't mind watching Nicholas Sparks' movies, but do I cry? Yeah. Do I like to cry in my books? Not really. <laughs> but I just don't like fluffy, uh, overly fluffy romances or unrealistic romances. Number eight. Nope. Book format. Book formatting you hate and avoid buying until it comes out in a different edition. I have to join the booktube world and saying mass paperbacks. My reasoning? The print is way too small. It's very convenient when you need a travel size, but I literally have to read with the book about right here because the print is too small for me. Number nine, nope trope. A trope that makes you go nope. <laughs> I don't know if this is a, like a love trope, but um, abusers slash bullies to love. Pretty much when a main character is a harassed, abused, bullied by the love interest, let's say in the childhood, um, and then becomes a love interest later on in life when maybe they've separated and gone their separate ways. And personally, me, if somebody were bullying me, harassing me, or even physically or mentally abusing me, you're, nope, mm, no, nope. you've already burned that bridge. Why would I love you? Goodbye. <laughs> Some people like that in fiction novels, but I just personally just think that's kind of romanticizing, um, loving somebody who literally is abusing you, manipulating you, and just all around not nice to you. I don't like that. Number 10. Nope. Recommendation. A book recommendation that is constantly hyped and pushed at you that you refuse to read. That was the after series by Anna Todd because I love the movie um, and my friends are like, you just got to read the series. You got to read the series. I see the series all over booktube as well. So that's why I tried it and I might try again. I don't know. Again, let me know down in the comments below if that's something you want me to read. <laughs> Number 11. Nope. Cliche slash pet peeve. A cliche or writing pet peeve that always makes you roll your eyes. I have two. And they all to deal with, like, introducing the main character or characters. And that is the over-exaggeration of character details that are just unrealistic. <laughs> and telling away too much info about the character at the beginning. Please let your intro and the actions of the character speak for your character's traits and characteristics themselves. I mean, obviously describe if the person's, like, 5'10", if it's female or male, or who, how, uh, their gender identity, how they identify, some characteristics, but don't, personality traits is what I meant to say. Let us kind of introduce through dialogue and what's going on in the plot in the beginning. You don't have to say everything at the beginning. <laughs> Number 12. Nope, love interest. A love interest that's not worthy of being one. 
I put down the After series, Harden and Tessa, but again, as I'm trying to think of maybe possibly giving it another chance, I don't really have anything else besides that one written down. The only one other I can think of, and the love interest didn't last very long, which was the House of Night series, which was the first one, which is, uh, um, oh wow, am I, why am I drawing a blank? Zoe and Eric Stark. Did not like that love interest at all. It, even reading it the first time, it rubbed me the wrong way. Number 13, Notebook. A book that shouldn't have existed and made you go nope. So I don't believe that books should never have existed. I don't believe in that. I feel like that's, it's extreme because if I don't like a book, that doesn't mean it didn't need to exist because somebody else might enjoy that book. So I don't have one per se. <laughs> Number 14, Nope Villain. A crappy villain that made you go nope. Again, I don't have one because again, if I... The first thing that grabs me is characters. So if the character's not really well written, nine times out of ten, I will put the book down. Because <laughs> I get very attached to characters. Fifteen. Nope. Death. A character death that still haunts you. Currently, they're towards the bottom of a book pile, so I could not bring them out. The first one is Jack Twist from Awakened by PC and Kristen Cass from the House of Night series. That's... Mm. I didn't like that because Jack as a character I loved. He was a cute, cute, cute boy and he did not deserve to die the way he did. I'm gonna cry just thinking about it and it still traumatizes me. Especially the way he died. Oh, give me a minute. The next one from that same series is Professor Dragon Langford um, from Destined by PC and Kristen Cast. I, he was probably by far one, besides Professor, L I'm probably gonna pronounce this name wrong, Lenabe, Lenabia, I'm sorry, the horse equine instructor. Those two were probably my favorite professors and the way Dragon Langfort went out was probably a very honorable way, but it was still very sad. Last question. Nope author. An author you had a bad experience with and decided to quit. I really don't have an answer for this um, because even though I might have had a bad experience with one book with an author, I do try to give them the benefit of the doubt and try another series. It could have been just, uh, the book could have been just rushed to get to publication and trying to meet deadlines. You don't know what the author was happening to the author while writing it. Sometimes that affects. So I try to give them the benefit of the doubt. However, if the second book is also kind of Eh, then it's like, mm, okay, I might not want to read that author anymore. So to me, at least to me, that is my opinion if I don't like the author. Because I mean, obviously authors are loved by many a people and also disliked by many a people. And that is okay. <laughs> I hope the notebook tag, you got to understand a little bit more of my reading tastes and getting to know me a little bit more. But thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked what you saw, please hit the subscribe button and that bell notification. I post a fun book Tag, book tag videos, bookish videos on Tuesdays like this one, even though this one's a day late, I do apologize, or fun uh, Sims content, excuse me, on Fridays, which fr this week's video might be a tinge day late um, just because of how busy I am this week already. <laughs> so thank you again. Thank you so much for watching and understanding when I post videos late. Uh, I hope you have a great rest of your week and I will see you in the next video.